In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the celebration of the Mass today on this Thursday of the seventh week of Easter. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees. So he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection for the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, or angels, or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage. For just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you loved them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our psalm for today, the responsorial psalm, is psalm number 16 and has a wonderful refrain, Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. This psalm, psalm number 16, could very likely have been written by David from the Old Testament, David when he was on the run from King Saul. And as we look at the book of Psalms, most scholars say that these psalms are written by David. At some point in his life, uh, many of the themes of those psalms are of a close relationship with God that David had. And here we, in this psalm today, Psalm 16, David calls out to the Lord and says, You are my hope. I bless you, Lord, because you are close to me. And with you at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. I like that phrase, because if we can imagine David, if he had written this at the time he was on the run from King Saul, he would have been looking probably over his shoulder quite a bit for when attackers could be coming at him. And in the life of David, he had risen from just a shepherd boy, uh, defeating then Goliath, and then coming into the royal court. And as the years passed, David became a soldier and a leader in the army. And he was going out having victories in battle. And King Saul became very jealous of this. Uh, king Saul was the king of Israel at the time, the first king. And so David felt uh, afraid for his life. And he went on the run and, and he went into the Judean wilderness, an area that is east of Jerusalem. It kind of goes down to the Dead Sea. It's a very barren land, and yet it has many valleys and uh, streams within it that dry up in the summer, but then in the rainy season, they fill with water. And so the geography is, is winding, and, and a lot of places you can hide in the cliffs and the caves. Uh, this is also the area where uh, Jesus you know, went out for 40 days, spending time fasting and praying in the Judean wilderness in the desert. So not just a desert of a lot of barrenness, but also rockiness and cliffs. And, and so imagine David out there praying to the Lord for protection and saying this psalm, Lord, with you at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. My heart is glad. My soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. I mean, there were nights there where I'm sure David had to go to sleep just hoping that he would wake up the next morning without being murdered in the middle of the night by, by some of Saul's soldiers coming to look for him. And uh, it looks like probably David spent uh, almost seven years, possibly, on the run, hiding away, and also other uh, refugees would come and join up with David because they too were on the run for one reason or the other. They're, they were wanted men and women, and so people would, would flock to David. So he almost built up a little a little army, although they didn't go out and fight any battles. They were just kind of a, a group of refugees on the run trying to stay alive. And so then eventually as time would play out, David 
would uh, come back to Jerusalem because Saul was killed in battle and then uh, David became king uh, of Israel. This close relationship that David has with God protected him and nurtured him in time of trouble. That's the kind of relationship we're invited into by God. God who loves us and protects us, who provides for our needs. So maybe if you feel in danger, if you feel afraid at times, if there, and we all feel afraid at times in our life, think of, a, come back to this psalm, Psalm number 16, and read through it and, and just hear how David wrote this beautiful hymn, this beautiful song about the Lord showing him the path of life and fullness of joys in his presence, the delights at your right hand forever. David really believed in God being right at his side, at his right side. David felt, I can, I, I'm protected because God is with me. God is with you today to help you in time of danger and fear, worry, anxiety. Call out to the Lord. Let the Lord come into your heart and your life to keep you safe and to give you hope. We pray for our church throughout the world. As we come to the end of the Easter season on Sunday, may we continue to bring the joy of Easter and the resurrection into our daily life. We pray to the Lord. As we prepare for the Feast of Pentecost on Sunday, that each of us in the church may be enlivened by the Holy Spirit that came upon the church at the first Pentecost, we pray to the Lord. For our leaders in the world, our leaders in the church, that they may guide us through times of danger, we pray to the Lord. For the doctors and nurses and the medical staff, people that are working to help the sick, whether it be from coronavirus or other illnesses, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, may they rest in eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these prayers and in your goodness and wisdom to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. For those of you not able to receive communion at this time, I offer now the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring and restore us through our participation in them that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.